I'm slightly sad about it, actually. I think I think possessions kind of weigh you down. Then they're kind of an attack vector. You know, people say, "Hey, billionaire, you got all this stuff." I'm like, well, now I don't have stuff. Now what? What are you gonna do? Yeah, those things that have sentimental value for sure. Are keeping those, you know. So what's the worst that could happen? I mean, be fine. You know, part of it is like, uh, like I have a bunch of houses, but I don't spend a lot of time in most of them, and um, that doesn't seem like a good use of assets. Like somebody could probably be enjoying those houses and get better use of them than me. So, does it really make sense for me to spend time designing and building a house? And I'd be real, you know. Get out like OCD on the little details and the design, and or should I be allocating that time to getting us to Mars? Uh, I should probably do the latter. Like, what's more important, Mars or a house? I like Mars. Building a house, even if it was a really great house, it still is not a good use of time relative to developing the rockets necessary to get us to Mars and helping solve sustainable energy. How does this wealth arise? It's if you organize people in a in a better way to produce products and services that are better than what existed before, and you have some ownership in that company, then that that essentially gives you the right to allocate more capital. So it is it's there's a conflation of consumption and capital allocation. If, if, a, if a company is making compelling products and services, it should get more capital, and if it's not, it should get less or go out of business. I, I do think there, in the in the United States especially, there's an overallocation of talent uh, in finance and law. Uh, basically, too many smart people go into finance and law. Um, so, you know, this is both a compliment and a criticism. Uh, we should have, uh, I think, fewer people. Doing law and fewer people doing finance and more people making stuff. And and uh, you know manufacturing used to be highly valued in in the United States and these days it's not it's it's often looked down upon which I think is wrong. Somebody's got to do the the real work. Like make, making a car, it's an honest day's it's an honest day's living. That's for sure. You know, or making anything really, or providing a valuable service, um, like providing. You know, good entertainment, good information. That these are all valuable things to do. If you don't make stuff, there's no stuff. You you can't just legislate money and and solve these things. If you don't make stuff, you, there is no stuff. It's, it's the whole the machine just grinds to a halt. Well, I hope consciousness propagates into the future and gets more more, more sophisticated and complex and and that it understands the questions to ask about the universe. I, I do think like the globalization uh, that, that we have at, at the sort of like the, the meme sphere uh, is uh, there's, there's not enough isolation between countries or, or regions. Um, it's like if you get a, if there's a mind virus, that, that mind virus can infect too much of the world. Uh, you know, like I, I actually sort of sympathize with the anti-globalization people because it's, it's like, man, we, we don't ever want everywhere to be the same for sure. And, and then we, we need some kind of like mind viral immunity. I mean, you don't always improve, but you can aspire to improve. Uh, you can aspire to be less wrong. I think a good, the tools of physics are very powerful. Like just assume you're wrong and your goal is to be less wrong. I don't think you're going to, if, if, succeed every day in being less wrong but you know if you're going to succeed in being less wrong most of the time you're doing great <laughs>